What you're looking at here is my latest project. It's an Arduino based weather station. Now this little module is the culmination of a bunch of work I've done over the last month or two. Um, this is about five inches wide and what it is is the receiver node of the weather station. So this is showing the temperature, the upper right, the humidity, the barometric pressure, the battery voltage of the sensor that's sending it and the uh, last date and time that the sent, it was sent in. And then the S and the R at the bottom are the send and receive, how many packets were sent and how many were received here. Now you saw it change there. In the bottom right, that G means this is the garage node. Um, and there's three nodes, one on the porch, one in the garage, and one in the basement. And every 30 seconds, this thing will change. Uh, this is something I fashioned up so that I could see what the conditions were at my house. And there you just saw it changed over to the basement node. So there was a lot that went into this. And um, I'll show you some of the pictures later as some of the prototypes as we went along. This you can see on the right here, there's an ethernet cable coming in and um, a power jack. And then there's a USB also for programming it. But that's just the receiver node there and what I fashioned up with some of my ingenuity. So as we go through it here, I'll show you some of the details of what's inside this box and some of the prototypes along the way. When I first started out, I prototyped it on an Arduino board and that's what's inside this little container because it was out on the back porch. There's, you can see a lithium polymer battery in there. It was all battery based. Um, it was a big prototype with all kind of wiring. Over here, there was a temperature and humidity sensor external and all these little jumper wires. Um, and now, see, this is the node I based it on. This, this board right here is a Devduino with a battery and the receiver, transceiver built on. Right there is a temperature humidity sensor. It's all built on this little board, very low power, um, set correctly. That battery on there will probably last months, if not a year or so. And then here's a barometric pressure sensor, which I wired up, that was not on board. So you, you go through a bunch of prototypes. I went, I actually had like a... Um, uh, solar panel that I put on the back porch to keep the thing charged and I don't need it now because that it's all contained in that one little unit and that's what all the sensors will be based on as we walk through this. And this is just showing some old video from about a month ago. That was the original receiver. The one you just saw, that's what it looked like originally before it was miniaturized. Um, it was in that Tupperware container there, that Gladware container. Um, and it's a different display of course, but it was it just had a bunch of jumper wires on it and stuff and it was not miniaturized in a smaller display. So as you go along, you prototype the thing, you figure out what's going to work, what you want to add to it, and then you move on from there. This is just some old video of the original sender node, the one sender node with the, this, uh, you can see the wire over on the right hand side going back to the solar panel and that was a functioning sender with a barometric pressure, humidity sensor up on top there, a little breadboard a rechargeable battery shield and the Arduino is underneath it there. Just gives you an idea how it started. And again, this small Devduino board with the transceiver, barometric, pressure, humidity, temperature sensor, and the battery all replace everything that was inside that yellow container on the right, the original prototype. Draws a lot less current too. The original on the right would have gone maybe a week or two on a battery unless I charged it. This left one will last a year at least. This is the current porch sensor node mounted in a little plastic container here to protect it from the elements with my other commercial sensors that go to various boards throughout the house. But the one in this plastic container on the right, see I just punched little holes in it so that the airflow can go through and hot glued the sensor and the barometric pressure sensor inside there just to keep it protected from the elements. But it's really underneath a closed porch so nothing's going to hit it. It's not pretty but it functions and every 30 30 minutes, it will send a uh, new update into the receiver node. This is the garage node. It's up on top of a shelf here. Again, the same Devduino sensor board here with the battery, the temperature humidity sensor. This one does not have barometric pressure sensor. Down here is the temperature and humidity though. Now this one's a little different. I had to come off externally because it's out in the garage and it's further away. I needed an external antenna and a higher power transceiver, but it works perfectly. So there's that one up on top of a shelf for the garage. 
This is the basement node, just sits on a table down here. Again, another similar Devduino board with a battery. He doesn't need an external antenna, he just uses this onboard transceiver. It's good enough power to make it upstairs. This is the bedroom remote mode. Now, they had the windows open, the guys are doing construction outside. Please disregard the dust all over the table. It came in overnight, it's ridiculous. Um, this is connected up to ethernet and it will cycle every 30 seconds and it will receive from the receiver node out in the living room and just give me the same updates, the same data for each of the three nodes, but it just talks to the receiver through ethernet. And it's a little dimmer because it would be too bright at night for me to sleep. So it, it works fine. Another function of the receiver is to serve up this web page. So this is in Chrome in my browser and it shows each of the three nodes, the porch at the top, then the garage, and, the, and then the basement at the bottom. And it just shows me all that same data you see on the LCD display, but I can get it from my cell phone or any, I can hit it from any web page in or outside of the house with the most updated data. Now in addition, I also pushed the data up to Zively. It's a data collection and graphing service. Um, so see here, it'll show over time all the sensors and the data, like the battery on the porch. And like over the last six hours, here's the humidity on the porch. It shows across the bottom, like the time and how it changed. So just all the different sensors and their data, the pressure, the humidity, the temperature, the battery voltage for all three locations graphed over time. It's pretty neat to look back at it and kind of look at trends and things like that. That is data is pushed up from the receiver as well. So the receiver has a lot of duties that he has to do. Now, not only do you have to build the hardware and for the microcontroller and all this stuff, but this is all the programming for the Arduino that you have to do. It's like a C-based language. Um, and this just shows you an idea of some of the programming that was done in the receiver module, which is the most extensive module. It's, it's C-based and it just shows how it updates things and updates the display and receives information from the sender nodes and serves up the web pages here is what we're doing on here just gives you an idea what's what's involved a lot of your time is spent troubleshooting and debugging the code that runs on the microcontroller on the boards I included a real-time clock on the receiver and you need to keep it in sync um, this is just a small portion of code that just shows if it's 3 o'clock in the morning and it's on the first or 15th day of the month then this thing goes out to the internet over the ethernet cable to a time server and then comes back and resets or updates the real time clock so that my real time clock on my board is always kept in sync and accurate. Now I'm just going to show you some still shots of me working on the receiver. The newest one on the left is the mega Arduino mega board and some of the prototyping. Here's the board inside the enclosure with the ethernet shield on the right and a bunch of the small boards that I had to wire up with some ribbon cable. There's some more. There's the transceiver on the far right. I'm trying to fit it in this enclosure so that the lid will go down. And I'm getting a little further. I used some nylon standoffs on the bottom and some screws and tapped them out to mount the display. I, it was really hard fitting all this stuff in here because it was too high. So I was trying to squish it down but keep it protected from the uh, stuff to shorting out. Eventually I got it though and glued it together. But that's the receiver. That has the most stuff in it. And there's his as the finished project. Now here's the original bedroom remote. Um, it was just laying in this container and had wires everywhere. But this one was built similarly to the receiver, the main receiver. It just has less in it. So you can see some more details here, but it's a very similar build process. See those nylon standoff and screws? I tapped the plastic and mounted them. Put the, That holds the display on the front on an angle. And then on the back left there is the Arduino board. And on top is the Ethernet board. It plugs in. And those little ribbon cables are old computer ribbon cables I found and cut them down to keep the wiring uh, small and flexible. So it just shows some of the process here in the build process. That one has a uh, that pot, the, the potentiometer there in the upper right, that blue thing, so I can dim the display. That's on the back of the bedroom node because it was too bright. I just pulled the wire in there. 
So there's the finished uh, bedroom display. Now these are just some pictures I took along the way of some of the prototypes. You know, since this was the first project I ever did with an Arduino, I started out like this with the Arduino board on the bottom, the breadboard on the top, all external components, all these wires. I had CD-ROM cables laying around. There's a transceiver, a wireless transceiver. You know, everything was external. It was just laying on this board. I had it laying out on the porch. And as I went, I figured out ways to miniaturize it and get rid of all these jumper wires and solder the stuff together. So that was the original, uh, that was what was inside that yellow container, the original sender. Look at that, the battery with the real time clock. And then I got it miniaturized down to that and stuck it out on the porch. And then upcoming is the uh, original receiver in this Tupperware container. So, you know, it was pretty cool learning process along the way. It ended up being a real useful project. So we'll finish out with some gratuitous shots of my uh, new electronics workbench I created. That's actually what I did this summer, which inspired me to do this. I moved this table over here, put up shelves, put up electrical outlets, got the computer and my whole electrical workstation set up here. I can also work on my trains here, but uh, mainly it works good for electronics and anything. It's good lighting here now with my magnifier. So uh, it's a nice workstation. So I hope this has been informative to you guys. I hope you found it entertaining and thanks for watching.